Hey guys, welcome back. This is Steve Arino's Cool Kits, Ravel 54 Chevy High Boy, Part 3, Take 1. Boom. Okay, so we're getting uh, parts out of the spray booth, and you recall I mentioned on this particular one, uh, because I wanted to do something with that exhaust system, I was going to have to depart from my traditional approach and and sort of get enough built on the engine where I could then uh, you know build you know get it built up and fit it and then loop around in here a little bit so that I could then continue on with the rest of the header adaptation uh, exhaust pipe crossover cherry bomb and then you know I could go along with the rest of the bill like I traditionally do so uh, that's where we are here we're getting you know the necessary uh, parts bits and pieces out of paint so that we can put at least the engine and the uh, suspension running gear together. So uh, here's the engine as it sets right now. You know, I mentioned that uh, pegging the pan so I could uh, drill in the pan so I could peg it to the frame. Uh, frame's been painted up, that gloss black. Um, you know, I did manage to get the coverage I wanted without losing detail on the um, rear end. Uh, I'm gonna go with the black. Uh, uh, drive shaft here because that's probably you know where the, the what the guy would have done right <clears throat> and so um, then I would I thought I would kind of, I've made a couple different points a couple different times in my videos to talk about the uh, chroming tech oh and I, I primed the um, underside of the the body you know if you if you go by sometimes where they're working on um, street rods and stuff you'll see that they they put the uh, body um, you know, without the front fenders necessarily. Um, so they have sort of like the, the, you know, the bottom part of the body and they'll have like the upper part of the body and they'll put it on a thing that's called a rotisserie and, you know, they get all the, um, uh, like they call it rocker, the, uh, you know, the, the body cancer that's down here in the fender wells and stuff, they get that all cut out and welded in and everything like that. So while they have it up on the rotisserie, uh, sometimes they'll go ahead and prime it and if they know the color, they'll paint it. So I've seen a lot of uh, street rods where the body color will come through on the underside because that's that's just what they do when they have it up on the rotisserie. And also your firewall will get the same color. So uh, this is gonna go, this is all gonna get uh, the candy uh, pumpkin uh, finish that I, a candy uh, orange finish that I talked about, um, which is gonna require an underlayment of gold, silver, and then go over with my clear orange. So that, that's my plan back here. And I did decide that I'm gonna vertically mount the gas tank, so I'm not gonna open up this here in order to get my exhaust running straight back. Okay, so there's that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so a couple, let me see if I can shift my modeling world back a little bit without toppling it off its axis. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what I've talked about, you know, several times before is this, this two-part uh, chroming process. And I, I mentioned in the introductory video, uh, let me get the box top up here. Um, yeah, so, you know, where they're, they're using just the straight out-of-the-box chrome here. And, you know, I don't, I don't do that uh, personally on my models anymore. Um, I use this two-part process with uh, a certain brand uh, type of paint where you use their black and they use their chrome. So um, here is the chrome that you get like in a kit, right? And we talked about that. And I, and I talked about how when we took the chrome off, it was uh, the same orange, uh, brittly plastic underneath it. Um, modern chrome, you take it, or current contemporary chrome, when you take it off parts, it's that strange white plastic, which very strange white plastic. It's always different than the model. And, Handles, sands, works totally different. You have to be kind of careful. But on this one, it's the same uh, brittly plastic. And then I went over with my two-part uh, process, and you you get. Uh, let, let me see if I can tilt this up where you guys can see this without getting seasick. Bear with me. I hope. Okay, I hope you're still with me there. So you get um, this. This is kind of what you get. So it's, it's um, I think, a lot uh, nicer. You know, it catches the light. And it looks, it looks more uh, realistic to me, like chrome would look. 
It's not silver, but it's it's kind of chrome. And there's my high boy, super high boy springs on the front. Those are looking pretty good. And my uh, traction bars. And I did decide to go ahead, because I'm spending so much energy uh, just rebuilding the um, at our Evergreen, I uh, spent so much energy just to get back to this point. Uh, I decided to just go with the, uh, what I called hokey phony baloney uh, steering. Um, you know, I've drilled and pegged, which I talked about uh, here. So I, cause I had to cut, I had to cut these off of the, the spring risers and they're gonna have to drill and peg uh, in right here on, on this um, uh, straight axle in the front. So I got that. And then the uh, carburetor, the dual carbs, they're back there. Okay, there's the dual carbs right there. And then the, um, the air cleaner, uh, I'm getting a lot of reflection off that, but let's see if you guys, hopefully you guys can see that. And I think it looks pretty good. And I think, you know, as you can see, th this, this type of chrome looks a lot there. That's a good reflect. You see how the light catches that? That's a lot more realistic looking chrome than this uh, Twilight chrome, right? And uh, obviously I'm, I'm a believer in, in uh, this, this type of effect that you get I, uh, just because, you know, a couple times I thought about it, didn't do it, thought about it, didn't do it. And on those models where I did that, I, I, every time I look at them, I think, I should have done that, you know, because now I look at them and think, man, I'm gonna have to do that model over again, you know. I, so I'm on the lookout for another kit of that particular model where I didn't do it to, and those models where I didn't do it to, to redo it and then uh, what in the trash or something on the other models I don't know so uh, the ones I'm not happy with so you know we we are always learning and we're always progressing in modeling and that's that's the point right is to is to you know build up our toolkit of skills right uh, and I talked about that in in one of my videos you know once upon a time you know and then we, we we're rattle in you know, rattle cans and bottles of paint and then we get an airbrush and we're into more sophisticated and then we get we go on and we're hopefully what's going on is you're always you know progressing in your modeling um and what you're doing <clears throat> at least that's what i'm doing okay so um you know a couple more pieces you know they got the the wheels, uh, you know, went through the dechroming and built back up a fit process. Okay, and there was a little bit of white putty filling here because there was, um, you know, just the injection molding that they did back in uh, 1976 uh, didn't completely fill the um, two-part molds, you know, when they were flowing the flat. The flow, it's called flow. They didn't get good flow. And uh, I've worked a little bit in uh, product injection uh, uh plastic, uh, and you, you have to model, nowadays while on the computer, which they wouldn't have back then, but we model the flow of plastic to make sure we get good flow all through the mold and good fill. Okay, so there's that. Uh, okay, guys, uh, that's it for now, and, uh, you know, like I say, the, 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 the paint crew has been doing a great job helping out, and we appreciate uh, what they've been doing, so, um, yeah, it, it, you know, We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay, guys. Uh, Steve Arino, Cool Kits, uh, Rel 54 Chevy, Part 3, continued. Boom. All right, back. Well, um, let's see. We got the uh, frame here on the build table, on the alignment table, and uh, started putting together the suspension. Uh, got the, uh, it's upside down here, obviously. I've got the high boy springs in place, uh, pin and peg the straight axle to those. Um, talked about how to do that on uh, one of my um, earlier videos, but uh, you know, not up in the air, nothing to chance, right? Measuring with the micrometer, getting stuff where it should be, you know, centered and you know, measured to the outside, and then drilling and pinning, you know, having uh, wire between parts with holes in them that line up perfect. That's the way to do it. And um, so got got that in place, got the steering in place. Um, everything's glued in here. And then we've got uh, in the back end here, we've got the uh, springs uh, on the riser shackles that you would have done for a high, high boy type setup. I've uh, done that once before. I did it on a, a, Ky a Corvette that I had. And um, you've got to, yeah, there's some tricky stuff you got to do back here too, but I won't go into that because that's for real cars. And then um, 
<clears throat> and then um, traction bars in here, which I robbed out of another kit. And the uh, shocks are going to mount from the uh, body, once I get that in place, uh, to the inside of the shackles, uh, which is a way to do that. Not, not going to the springs, but going instead to the shackles. So that'll, that'll be a later step. I'll drill a hole in here and, and get those installed. Okay, so those will run between the body, <clears throat> underside of the body to the inside of the shackle on each side. Um, tires, you know, all painted up with the Goodyear, the blue line stripe and the blue line, oh, you probably can't read over here, but it's a blue line. Um, uh, there's a bunch of text in here that you gotta bring out with a real steady hand, but it says, uh, Drag slick, raceway, and stock, you know, in blue text right there. And you got the blue line around, you got the white white Goodyear, which we all love to see on our on our tires, and then you got these sanded up um, so they don't look all shiny, right? And those are those Gen 1 type tires, which uh, that's just what you get in the kit, and you gotta work with what you got, push it down the road. So we got those ready to go. Um, Let's see. So then I'm going to pause here. I'm going to flip it over and then we're going to look at uh, getting the engine and the drive shaft in place. Okay. Okay, back. I flipped it over, uh, fit the uh, drive shaft in place back here. Um, got the engine, you know, where I had that peg, pe peg hole I drilled for the in the drag pan. Uh, you won't ever see that from underneath. And then this is just where uh, in the in the regular stock uh, kit they had the uh, transmission uh, sitting back here. And there's no motor mounts on this one. It just goes between that peg and this this point right here. So it's a little fiddly. And, um, you know, you got to make sure that you got the stuff standing straight up and down uh, because other this is your last chance to make sure it's right. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to look right when you raise the hood and um, look in the car because it'll be kicked off to the side, tweaked over. Um, even so, I always wait to put in any kind of top blower thing till the very, very last when everything is all ready to go. So uh, my special filter is just sitting up here on top of the dual, the dual carburetors. Okay, so uh, you know that will get that all glued in, but it's all fitting. It just fell together really, really nice. Even though a lot of these parts came from different places, right? Um, I'm real happy with the way this this all went together. All right. Uh, oh, and I and I the reason I had this was um, you want to make sure when you're doing something like this that you actually have clearance when the hood is closed that you know it doesn't bang on the top of the you know bang on the underside of the hood. So I did. I checked that all out and uh, made sure that everything was going to clear in the final assembly. So uh, it's all good. It, everything's working out so far. Just waiting for my aftermarket distributor to come in and I, and I drilled the holes over here on the cylinders uh, heads so that uh, I can get between my uh, distributor and, and the wire points on each side. And uh, I've got my, my goodies for the front of the engine over here. Uh, those will go on sort of towards the end when I, when I start bringing in the radiator and all that stuff over here. Okay, so this is where we are right now, but I, I think I've almost got enough where now I can flip it over and start building my exhaust system, which was the whole point of this departure on the, you know, uh, regular way I do it. Um, you know, like I said, I'm looping in right here because I had to get enough built here where I could then have it all glued in place, flip it over and then build my exhaust system. So, we, we, you know, we're, we're back where we can work on that. All right, bye. Hey guys, back. Well, no, song, no sooner had I shut off the camera than I uh, got a message uh, said the uh, distributor I ordered had showed up in the mailbox. So um, <clears throat> here we go. And uh, yeah, uh, I would say that's pretty nice. That's And that's like nicer than some of the other ones that I've ordered. I've not tried this brand before. So... Uh, Oh, and it comes with a coil. Oh, cool. Because, uh, yeah, wow, with a look, look at that, a little, little nipple on the end of the coil. Can you see that right there? And they give you this uh, tubing. Huh, well, um, that's cool. <clears throat> All right, so so I, I think we're, 
we're set the motor <laughs> we're set the motor ahead pardon the pun um, you know install this uh, distributor and uh, you know, coil is going to go I think up on the firewall so we'll, we'll get that in later down the build but get the distributor in, get that wired up to cylinders and get uh, then we can continue uh, and that's a great hobby just when you need something boom it shows up in the mail <laughs> okay all right bye